I just picked up a Christmas present for myself, and it's the new Riedel Performance Champagne Stemware. And apparently, Performance is the new essential must-have wine glass collection for all wine lovers. Well, let's see if it's true. Stay tuned. Welcome to this week's episode. Yes, I went and uh, got a little Christmas present for myself because I was reading in, I think it was December's Wine Spectator magazine, about these new wine glasses from Riedel. Now I have to get it out very carefully here. And the wine critic was saying how uh, he doesn't like a lot of the wine glasses that are out on the market because... They, um, they just don't allow uh, for enough bubbles, uh, exposure to bubbles, which I think they used to think was kind of a bad idea. You, you wanted to keep the bubbles closed in. And they're beautiful, aren't they? Um, they're all crystal. And um, they're supposedly dishwasher safe. I don't think I'm ever going to put mine in the dishwasher to find out. Um, and the Riedel glasses in particular are are always known for being what they call varietal specific, right? So these were made for champagne and sparkling wine and cava and prosecco, which we've covered quite a bit in our shows and I'm gonna do more. And I thought, well, you know what? It would be nice to um, try these new ones out and, and see what the wine critic was thinking. And I'm going to use a bottle of sparkling wine that our friends gave my wife for Christmas. And she agreed to share it for this week's episode, as long as we had sushi for dinner to go with it. So uh, I'll take care of that part. But it's a, a very nice sparkling wine from California, uh, Mum Napa uh, Blanc de Blancs. And I will explain what that is. And what I'd like to do too is not only look at that wine and tell you what I think, but what I'd like to do is pour it in several different glasses, which are known for being, you know, what you're supposed to have your um, sparkling wine and champagnes in. And then maybe at the end, if you stay tuned to the end, I'll try a glass that should not work and let's just see what happens. So it's all about sparkling wine and my brand new Riedel Performance champagne glasses. Let's take a look at this very special uh, Christmas present sparkling wine from our very, very good friends. So this is the lovely gift our friends gave to uh, my wife for Christmas. And we've I've shown some um, Mum Napa wines before. Uh, and you know, I've never tried this one. So it's it's great they got this for us. So I think I've done uh, the Mum Brut Rosé, which is absolutely delicious, and the, and the Prestige. So this one's wonderful. Uh, Mum Napa from Napa Valley. And it's Blanc de Blancs which translates into white from whites. So this uh, blend, um, which is kind of neat, uh, the winery started making their first sparkling wine back in 1983, and they just do a fantastic job. Uh, if you get a chance to visit them while you're up in California, I highly recommend it. So this one is going to be um, Chardonnay and Pinot Gris, so both um, uh, white grapes. And it's very um, traditional um, as far as using Chardonnay to make sparkling wine, especially if you're in, in uh, Champagne, France. And I'm going to do another whole episode on the Blanc de Blancs and what's the difference between um, Blanc de Noir. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So this is the lovely uh, bottle they gave us. And what I thought I would do is not only taste it and, and uh, sort of give you what my thoughts on it, but I'm going to try it in my new um, Riedel Performance uh, Sparkling Wine Champagne uh, Varietal Specific Glass. So let's give it a try. I already took off the cage, um, and I'll show in some other episodes how to take the cage off carefully. But you just want to sort of hold the bottle and twist the bottle, not necessarily the cork, which is kind of a nice way of doing it. And just keep kind of moving, and you'll feel it sort of gently um, push out, but you can tell my, my left hand isn't twisting the cork at all. I'm just sort of twisting the bottle and keeping it at an angle. And you just want to sort of hear a, uh, let's see, a little whisper like that. And instead of that big popping sound. So let's give it a try.
Well, as you can tell, these glasses are crystal. They're pretty. And I'm noticing that it has um, this nice sort of beveled ridges on it. It has a very nice stem, which is pleasant to hold. And I noticed when I put it down on the table, it doesn't seem to go anywhere. And I can um, uh, move it around and swirl it. It makes a beautiful, beautiful color in here. If you can see the golden uh, apple um, cue to it. Um, you can see the bubbles coming up, and it's interesting, and I'm going to get to this in my other glass. I can, oh, I can, my nose is a big nose, um, and I can get it in the glass, which is sort of nice because I, I want to get in there and, and smell the beautiful aromas. So it smells wonderful. It definitely has um, a little bit of citrus, and um, I'm getting some pretty floral and um, a little bit of peach in there. Hmm. And like I said, the golden apple. Let's give it a try. Mo remember, mostly Chardonnay and just a little bit of Pinot Gris thrown in. Hmm. Delicious. The fruit comes through. Um, nice, fine effervescence. I'm still tasting it, which is another good sign. It has a very nice finish um, and does look wonderful in the glass. So my initial impression so far um, is this is a very nice uh, champagne glass or for sparkling wines. It's it's showing off the wine. I'm able to get my, no my big nose in there. Yeah, and I can smell everything and it looks very nice. It feels comfortable. I'm not worried I'm, it's going to go tipping over. Um, and another nice thing, it's a good sort of test and, and quality glasses in any glass that you're having, it should be in enjoying um, an enjoyment to drink from it. And this one is so far. Especially up here around the rim, it's very thin. So it fits nicely on my, um, my, my lips and the wine swishes back quite nice and there was still room for my nose. So overall, I think this is very nice. Um, from a wonderful producer. They have some fantastic wines. Um, this series, their Blanc de Blancs, um, will come in, this is a non-vintage, right? So this just means that, you know, they take their best wine and, and, they'll, and they'll make the blend and um, they uh, age it on its leaves for a little bit, but it's not in um, uh, oak barrels and it's not aged. Um, it's not, a, it's not a, what they call a vintage a sparkling wine or even a vintage champagne. It's it's just their what their best blend and and they've put it through the traditional method, uh, which we'll talk about in some other shows. So it's a, a just absolutely fantastic. So uh, what a very nice gift. I think it'll go very well with uh, the sushi and the um, and the shrimp that we're going to have the tempura shrimp. Nothing like fried food and sparkling wine. It's a great combination. So what I want to do now is show you two um, traditional glasses that I've used for a number of years. And this one, interestingly enough, is also Riedel. And this apparently is uh, maybe their older version um, because it's not the performance blend. And this one, um, I, I've, I, I do enjoy it. And I have to agree with the wine critic. And that is, he, his thoughts were, Glasses that are so narrow like this maybe focus the aromas too much so, um, and then when you go to put your nose in it, I have a hard time getting my nose in there. If so, for those of us that have larger noses, it is a little bit of a challenge, but I think as far as the beauty goes, um, I tend to think this one looks a little bit better than my new performance glass, but um, because you can see the bubbles. Um, and it also does a very nice job of, um, a nice thickness, right? So it's very thin uh, along the rim. Places it correctly in my mouth. Very enjoyable, a nice stem. This one's thinner. Notice the base, you might not be able to see the base. The base is quite small, so I maybe would worry about tipping it over. I have broken a couple of these, believe it or not. And, um, and I just went to these because this performance one is, is uh, brand new, just came out. So this is a traditional tulip, uh, is usually what you'll hear referred to as a, as a tulip shaped glass. And then this is one of my favorite ones, just because it's a beautiful glass and it's sentimental to me. Uh, uh, my uh, mom got uh, this for me. Uh, wonderful from Williams-Sonoma. 
it's it's beautiful. It's kind of traditional to the the if, if you heard of the coupe uh, glass, and these were very popular for a number of years. And as you can see, you get a you know a, a wide um, uh, foam uh, or from the bubbles. Uh, it looks pretty in the glass. But the number one complaint about these glasses is it's not really focusing the uh, aromas, so it's hard to it's hard to pick anything out. Where here, it's very easy to, uh, the, to catch the floral aromas and some of those citrus notes and a little bit of the stone fruit, I think from that Pinot Gris. This one as well, but this one's just sort of all over the place. So I enjoy drinking out of these, which is really all that matters, is, is your enjoyment. And if you like drinking out of it, then that's your glass. Uh, so looking at this, I just enjoy it, but I have to admit, if I were having something where I really wanted to, you know, get in there and get the aromas, I wasn't just, you know, pouring it and, and, and just enjoying just enjoying it and not thinking about it. So that'd probably be like my, my Prosecco uh, category, um, where I'm just going to pour it and drink it. We're having some appetizers. Friends are around. Or I'm walking around. I'm not, you know... Um, necessarily so focused on uh, discerning um, my wine or enjoying it that way. So it's beautiful. I like this shape too. So these represent, of course, the two very traditional ones. And then, of course, my new performance uh, Riedel uh, Champagne Sparkling Wine Glass. So I'm glad I got it. Uh, it was a nice Christmas present for myself. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with them. Uh, and I still like my, 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 my go-tos. Before I, I told you, if you stay till the end, let's try something different and see if the whole idea of like, what does the glass really matter? Well, it's been my experience that the glass does matter, um, especially in wines that, you know, you're trying to get a little bit more enjoyment of. If you're just having a hamburger and you're just craving a cab and you have a solo cup, it'll work. <laughs> it'll get the wine to your mouth. I don't know if it'd be the most enjoyable experience or if you have, you know, a very nice $75 bottle of Napa cab if you really want to put in a red solo cup. But um, the, the glasses, especially Riedel in particular, they're known for, of course, the, the, the physical, the, the tactile feeling you get from the glasses and how it places on your mouth and, and getting your nose into it just the right way and how it feels in your hand. So on that, it sort of wins on all fronts. But, I, you know, so does my coupe. So let's do this. Let's take my Samuel Smith's British pint glass. <laughs> I like. I really love my Samuel Smith ales anyway. And let's try it in that and see if see if the enjoyment is uh, is is there. So as you can tell, you get the nice bubbles. It's not that it doesn't look pretty. You know, it's. You, I think we're just so used to seeing beer in these. It's a bit weird when you try to swirl it. You don't get much, and of course you'd have to pull. You know, pour so much in to be able to really swirl it. Well, I can get my nose in there. And I'm still getting the uh, floral and I'm still getting some of the citrus notes. So good on that count. Hmm. Now, I have to admit, of course, the, the sparkling wine still tastes good. However, the lip on my British pint glass is pretty thick, so it felt you know, here I am having this like, you know, delicate, lovely, sparkling wine and plonk, you know, this big glass falls on my on my tongue, which kind of th threw me for a loop. Um, but does it get the wine in my mouth? Yeah. However, I would only do that if I were really hard up and there are no glasses available in the house. So there you go. We've looked at... Four, uh, four glasses, <laughs> three for sparkling wine, and one that's definitely for uh, a, a good pint of beer. And uh, traditional, very new, just came out. And I think I do agree with the wine critic where the performance does a nice job in all categories. So it's nice on looks, it's nice on placement, it's nice on how it feels in your hand uh, and how it makes the wine look. Um, but so do my other ones. So if you have these and, and you think like, I don't know if I want to go spend, you know, almost $60 for two um, glasses, 
Uh, it's kind of funny on their box, they'll say like, well, you should invest uh, in your glasses uh, for about the price uh, of a bottle of wine per glass. <laughs> so I guess that's about right. So 50, almost $60 for two glasses. So um, it's that's sort of your choice. But I can tell you, I've enjoyed it. I, I'm glad I bought it. And I, I like my tried and true tulip and my coupe. Well, thank you so much for being such low subscribers. We looked at uh, a wonderful sparkling wine from Mum Napa. Just uh, fantastic. Definitely recommend it. And uh, we'll let them know how much we enjoyed it. And um, we looked at some different glasses. So glassware, I would say, is important. It's been my experience. It is important. But don't be too concerned about if I don't have the right glass. Remember, you want a glass that's enjoyable to you. Does it feel nice in your hand? Does it help you enjoy the wine, which is the whole reason why? So I think I should toast you with my brand new glass, huh? So thank you for being such loyal subscribers. Um, I sure appreciate it. And thank you for sharing our show with your friends and family and coworkers. It means a lot to us. And uh, I hope you look forward to some more episodes coming out this year. And as always... Cheers.